Street Sweeping 101 Using Street Sweepers to Improve Water and Air Quality Since the early 1900s, street sweeping has been used to remove debris from roadways and other paved surfaces. It was common to think that if the street looked clean, it was clean. Today, however, this reason for sweeping is undergoing significant reappraisal. That is because study after study, dating back to the 1970s, have constantly shown that up to 50% of heavy metals and other pollutants of great concern, like nutrients and toxics, are attached to street dirt particles too small for most mechanical brush sweepers currently being used to effectively remove. Even though a street may look clean after being swept, there still may be a significant amount depending on the sweeper model used and the driver technique. But in spite of this evidence, the actual particle pickup effectiveness of modern day sweepers and whether the effectiveness translates into real reduction in the mass of pollutants being washed down from urban streets, then transported downstream by stormwater and entering receiving waters. In addition, extremely small micron particles are seen to pose a significant air quality concern. According to EPA estimates, about 30,000 people in the United States die each year as a result of pollutants attached to extremely small micron particles, and about a million more sustain serious lung impairment. The important aspects of a street sweeping program designed to focus on the maximum reduction of pollutants traditionally found in urban stormwater runoff and particulate matter PM, that fouls urban air quality. Pavement conditions are known to affect the pickup performance of street sweepers. Street sweepers have difficulty effectively picking up particulate matter from streets whose pavements are poor because this usually means lots of surface cracks and deep depressions where dirt can accumulate. For a community to realize the benefits of better street sweeping pickup performance, proper pavement maintenance activities are needed to maintain a minimum pavement condition rating of fair to good throughout the community. In addition, all cracks should be sealed on a regular and ongoing basis. Barriers such as street curves and medium barriers are known to have an effect on both the accumulation of street dirt and the ability of the street sweepers to effectively pick up the accumulated material. A recent study showed that 75% of the sediment and associated pollutant captured through sweeping were found within 3 feet of the curb face. So the focus of a good street sweeping program should be on streets and roadways that are curbed and have other barriers. Forward speed of a street sweeper while sweeping will affect the ability to pick up particulate matter. Everything else considered equal, the pickup effectiveness increases as the forward speed decreases. The optimum average forward sweeping speed is approximately 5 miles per hour. Fugitive dust is the important link between those sweeping programs that have a positive impact on air quality and those that do not. The use of water spray during sweeping operation to reduce fugitive dust is quite typical. However, this practice has been shown to reduce street dirt pickup, especially for the smallest particulate fractions of the accumulated street dirt that are very contaminated with pollutants. It is clear that the selection of the type of street sweeper matters for both the pickup performance and the fugitive dust losses that might occur. Types of street sweepers There are four general types of sweepers. Mechanical broom Vacuum Regenerative air and high efficiency each type has its advantages and disadvantages. Mechanical Broom Sweepers Mechanical broom sweeping technology may be linked to cleaning with a broom and a dustpan. Collected debris is swept onto some type of conveyor for transfer to a hopper. Mechanical broom machines 
are usually outfitted with gutter brooms and outfitted with a series of water spray nozzles to suppress fugitive dust. The use of water during sweeping transforms the accumulated street dirt into mud-like substance whose removal becomes more difficult. Vacuum Sweepers While they seem to do a better job than a broom sweeper in removing and retaining small particles, the level of emissions of fine particles can still be significant if fugitive dust losses are not controlled. Vacuum sweepers may be compared to a household vacuum system. An auxiliary engine powers a fan, which creates a vacuum and therefore a suction. Some vacuum sweeper models are designed to only remove materials accumulated within 36 inches of the gutter itself and employ only gutter brooms to brush debris towards the vacuum opening in the head. Regenerative Air Sweepers they are similar to vacuum sweepers. There is a vacuum inlet located on one side of the sweeping head. Generally speaking, regenerative air systems are more environmentally friendly than vacuum machines or mechanical broom sweepers. Unlike vacuum machines, regenerative air sweepers consistently recirculate or regenerate their air supply internally. Regenerative air sweepers employ a closed loop or cyclonic effect to clean. Regenerative air sweepers tend to do a better job of cleaning over the entire pavement service covered and are recognized for this capability. Regenerative air technology has become widely seen as having a number of advantages. Cleaning a wider path. Removing small particles better and limiting the amount of dust-laden air that is exhausted back into the atmosphere. Since these machines air blast the pavement across the entire width of the sweeping head. High Efficiency Sweepers The key to the current definition of high efficiency sweeper is these machines not only remove a high level of accumulated materials of all sizes, especially small micron materials less than 60 microns, and are designed to control fugitive dust losses. This means they are designed to exhaust no visible fugitive dust, and most are designed to sweep without water. A high efficiency sweeper is a mechanical or regenerative machine using a baghouse designed filter to capture fugitive dust. Component Adjustments The following slides will explain common adjustments for sweeping components found on most all broom sweepers, even different manufacturers. Gutter Broom Adjustments when adjusting gutter brooms, we are looking for a pattern that marks the ground when we run the gutter broom. The proper pattern will start contact at the gutter 90 degrees out from the sweeper and will make a crescent-shaped pattern that will lift off the ground inside the path of the drag shoes. The left broom showing a correct pattern starting at 9 o'clock and lifting off the ground at 1 o'clock. If we tilt the broom too far outward, we will lift the inside of the broom too far and this will cause a streak past the drag shoe. A flatter broom needs less down pressure to sweep better than a broom tilted too much. Too flat will cause a broom to wobble. Broom angles should be 5 degree forward and 5 degree outward. To achieve the proper angles on a gutter broom, we use an angle finder. These are only a few dollars at a hardware store. Placing the angle finder parallel to the lower link is incorrect. The angle finder needs to be placed parallel to the gutter. Putting the angle finder along in the direction that the broom tilts is incorrect. The angle finder needs to be placed on the gutter broom plate 90 degrees to the gutter. With the gutter broom in the fullest sweeping position, the forward tilt is more of an inward tilt. The outward tilt is almost a forward tilt. By moving our pin stop so the broom doesn't come out as far, 
you can see that the forward angle is more forward and the outward angle is more outward. When adjusting your brooms, put the pin stop to a comfortable position that you will want to operate at. Too far out will limit your ability to tilt the broom down into the gutter because the tilt being more forward, not outward. If you want your broom out as far as they'll go, that is fine. Just adjust the angles so you have your 5 degree forward and 5 degree outward tilt. Putting your angle finder parallel to the chassis for your forward angle and 90 degrees out from the chassis for your outward angle. If you choose to pin your brooms inward, this will give you more of an outward tilt to get down into the gutter. And it will give you a greater tilt before the inside of the broom lifts off the ground and streaks past the drag shoe. As before, putting your angle finder parallel to the chassis for your forward angle and 90 degrees out from the chassis for your outward angle. Main Broom Adjustment Park the sweeper on a level surface that can be used to show the main broom sweeping pattern. Place the main broom switch in the on position to lower and start the rotation of the main broom. Let the broom rotate enough to show a pattern on the surface. Move the sweeper forward from the pattern. Observe and measure the patterns to see if it's within the 4 to 8 inches. A 4 inch pattern is good for light materials on smooth streets. A 6 inch pattern is recommended. An 8 inch pattern is good for heavy sweeping like asphalt grindings. If your pattern is not square as shown here, you need to correct by adjusting each side to a 6 inch pattern independent from the other side. A wider pattern is heavier than a narrow pattern. Broom patterns should be equal from side to side and 6 inches wide. Broom should be adjusted each side independently. Broom bounce is caused by being too heavy on the ground. Look at the mud mark on the broom. A mud mark is the end of the bristle that contacts the ground. The heavier the contact, the wider the mud mark. A properly adjusted broom should show only one inch mud mark on both sides. There are different types of brooms available on the market. Some are made for ease of changing and some are made for different types of sweeping. A wafer broom is easier to rebuild on the machine and can be made with more bristles or less. You can mix poly and wire bristles. Strip brush brooms are the easiest to rebuild. They are best in rock and gravel or asphalt sweeping. The tube broom is more of a standard type of broom and is lighter than a cable wrap type of broom. The lighter the broom, the less wear on pins and bushings on the broom suspension parts. Tube brooms can have more bristles than other brooms. Keep in mind that the more bristles that are in a broom, the cleaner it will sweep and will need less down pressure. This will give you longer broom life. Regenerative air. Airflow with vacuum enhancer. I'm going to show the airflow path and illustrate how a vacuum enhancer works. The yellow square will represent the vacuum enhancer door, starting with the door closed and the fan turning. The air is pulled from the hopper and sent to the pickup head. The air goes through the pressure slot and moves the debris to the suction hose, then back to the hopper. With the vacuum enhancer closed, all the air goes to the pressure slot, making the pressure to the ground higher. Because the restriction of the small pressure slot, the air flow through the sweeper is slower, reducing the suction power at the suction hose. If we open the vacuum enhancer all the way, a portion of that pressure is released. This reduces the air pressure to the ground, but the suction increases because there's more airflow through the body and less back pressure, and why it's called a vacuum enhancer. But what is happening is we're increasing the air to convey more material. The airflow through the sweeper is increased, causing a stronger suction.
The operator understands that. As an operator, you need to determine how much air pressure you need on the ground to move the debris. You need to start with the vacuum enhancer closed. Engine RPMs around 1500. As you move, look at the right side drag shoe. If there is dusty dirt on the ground and you are trying to sweep and you see blowout from underneath the drag shoe, bump the vacuum enhancer open 10%, 20%, or 30% until the blowout has just stopped. By opening the vacuum enhancer, you're not only reducing air pressure to the ground, but also increasing air speed up to the hopper. You are timing the air pressure and the suction for the type of debris that you're trying to pick up. The dirt that was blowing out from underneath the drag shoe was because there was more air speed going down to the ground than was going up into the hopper. Heavy dirt. More air pressure to the ground. Open enhancer enough to stop blowout. Look behind the sweeper in the mirrors. If you are leaving or smearing dirt or sand, increase engine RPMs for more air pressure and readjust enhancer to reduce blowout. Slow down. The slower you go, the easier it is for the air to do its job. Light leaves. Less air pressure. Open enhancer all the way. If you are pushing leaves into a pile, increase RPMs for more suction to help pull the front curtains in. Try not to take too large amounts of leaves at once, even if a second pass is necessary. Back up and then hit the piles into a smaller amount so it can go under the front curtains. Carryover. Too much airflow. If you run too high of engine RPMs and don't need to, you will have carryover. Carryover is when the airspeed is so fast that the debris stay in the airflow and doesn't drop out into the hopper and goes back through the fan. This is bad. Debris can stick to the fan blades and cause an out of balance that will break the fan and the housing. It could also plug up the pressure slot, giving you more work to clean it back out. Run the lowest RPMs that can do what needs to be done. Water must be on in the suction hose to gain weight to the debris so it will drop out of the airflow better. Never run without this water on unless you're picking up water. Don't overfill the debris body. As the hopper fills up, the airspeed increases and more carryover will occur. Don't go over the top of the side door. Dust control system. Water spray systems are to suppress dust that will cause harm to people. Water spray system is important to help protect the fan on a vacuum or regenerative air machine. No need to run the water spray system if the above are not there. Water spray nozzles need to mist, not flood, to control dust. Putting water on the ground before the main broom or the pickup head will just turn to mud and smear. When that mud dries and traffic dries over it, it causes health damaging dust. To clean a water spray nozzle, Use compressed air to blow the dirt out. Digging the dirt out will open the orifice and damage the nozzle. Do not run water pumps when there is no water in the tanks, even if the pump is a run-dry type. 